Hello everyone. This is Arthur Robinson Jr. I am the creator of PowerfulInterviews.com and in this exclusive interview you're going to hear from a great friend of mine. His name is Joe Block and he is the business growth guru and I highly recommend if you want to listen to this life-changing powerful interview that you will not find anywhere else on the planet go to www.PowerfulInterviews.com and in this exclusive interview you're going to hear how Joe Block built a real estate syndication company from scratch. He's also going to talk about licensing deals and he's also going to talk about purchasing orders. So right about now get your pen and your pad and write down some notes. In this exclusive interview that I'm going to reveal to you with Joe Block is going to change your life. So check it out. Good evening everyone. This is Arthur Robinson Jr. and today I have a special treat just for you. Today I'm going to be interviewing a powerful man and a great friend of mine. His name is Joe Block and he is America's business growth guru. And he's also a strategist. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Joe Block to the call. Arthur, how are you? Well, I'm doing great and it's getting better each and every single day. And what I would like to know, and could you educate the listeners about who you are and how did you get started in terms of building your business from scratch? Well, I'm a, I'm a long-time entrepreneur. I actually started out in the CPA business. I didn't really like the, um, the accounting business too much, but it gave me good training, and, and I worked at you know one of the big uh, CPA firms, Price Waterhouse. And the last account that I worked on there was a big real estate firm, and they had me converting the books and records of tax re- of partnerships into tax returns, which was very very boring. I didn't like it at all, but uh, I did like reading the partnership agreements, and I quit the firm and built the exact kind of business that uh, that I was working on. So I had something to model, and I modeled after it and you know went for it and that was it now i went to your incredible website and i was very impressed by your original content that you have on your website and i know that you started a real estate syndication firm can you tell the listeners a little more about that syndication means uh, pooling capital it's it's really the foundation of capitalism where you know one person doesn't have enough money to buy something very dramatic by himself, but if you put 10 or 20 people together, you know, that could be a lot of money. The question is, who's going to be in charge of all the money? I teach the guys how to be in charge. I teach people how to be the syndicator, the promoter, the person who's in charge, the president of the company, because to me, those are the real entrepreneurs, and I've been doing it for years. After I got out of the syndication business, I I learned how to raise capital. I got into the venture capital business and started raising money and building businesses. And I've built dozens of businesses or been involved somehow in building those. And, you know, and and I mostly come at this from a perspective of mostly perspective is sales. I, I love to sell, and I think that a lot of what happens in business requires a lot of selling. And so that's a lot of what I help people learn how to do. So communication, negotiation, and salesmanship are those three components that a business owner needs in, in order to take his business to the next level, making eight figures or more? You know, to me, there are three fundamental areas that a business owner has to focus on. Number one, you have to position yourself as an expert in whatever you do. Now, whether that's you personally are an expert, your business is an expert, the team of people you put together are expert in something because money follows expertise, always. Money always follows expertise, and if you are not expert in something, you know, you're not going to see the cash. The second thing is uh, what I call a revenue octopus. And a revenue octopus means that a young little business needs to have multiple streams of revenue that are flowing into it. It doesn't mean you're in multiple different businesses. It means that you figure out different ways to have your core business be monetized. And the last one is I call it creating buyers. That's getting prospects to beg to become your customers. I rarely ask anybody or I rarely have to hustle anybody to become a customer. I mostly lay out the facts, say, you know, do you want to be involved? And they say yes or no. And nine times out of ten, I've got a pretty good batting average, so it works out pretty well. So those are, in my mind, the three most fundamental aspects that somebody needs to, uh, you know, to to knock down. Can you educate our listeners or can you give them maybe one specific tip on how can they raise capital for their business first again the first thing that you have to do 
money follows expertise. If you don't have demonstrated expertise in a certain area, and one of the things that I'll tell everybody is I guarantee you're an expert in something. Now, you may uh, take for granted your own skills, and you may not, you know, really give yourself a lot of credit for the things that you know how to do, but I promise you that you have a lot more expertise than you think. And whenever you want to raise money, you have to come up with something that is uh, that is directly related to your expertise. It has to be able to solve problems, and it has to be able to directly relate to the expertise that you have. And if you, you know, if you do that, uh, you'll find yourself in a situation where uh, more often than not, money is going to want to follow you. I mean, I won't kid anybody, raising money is not uh, a walk in the park. But, you know, the benefit of raising money is very significant. And if you need to raise money, then, you know, first things first, you know, get your um, get your expertise in order and then start thinking about how you're going to generate revenue into your business. Do you need a team in order for you to raise capital for your business? Let's put it like this. Let's say that, you know, you go to an investor, and there's different kinds of investors. You know, one kind of investor could be your grandmother, and your grandmother just wants to see you succeed and have a good job and, you know, give yourself a job. That's not what I'm really talking about. I'm talking about somebody who maybe is more of a stranger that doesn't really care about you and you having a job. They care about you making money so that they have more than when they started. That person does not want to bet just on you. They want to bet on a team. They want to bet on the whole concept. And if something happens to you, they want to know that that the deal or the concept is bigger than just you. So, you know, think about it for yourself. You know, would you give somebody money if, uh, if it was just them? And if you put yourself in the shoes of the investor, then, you know, you're going to probably be able to think a lot more clearly about what that person would be like. And if you can't figure out those things, uh, somebody like me can ask you questions that would help you to think about exactly what, what an investor would be looking for. Now, let's talk about the growth architect. I saw that powerful statement on your website. Can you educate the listeners about that? It came up many years ago. One of my clients was in the real estate business. And, you know, I draw pictures of businesses. I'm not any kind of a fancy drawer. I mean, I I don't have the drawing skills of anybody who's older than the second grade. I draw stick figures. But I draw pictures and circles and and, and lines between uh, organizations and I draw pictures of what companies should look like. And then I give them to other people uh, who are able to bring those pictures to life. There's a certain aspect of the business I work in. There's a certain aspect that other people uh, get involved and work in. And this one particular client, he said, you know, uh, it's, it's like you've drawn an elevation of a building. This was a real estate guy. An elevation is a picture of a building. He said, you know, you're, you're like an architect, except for it's, it's about growth. And that's kind of where the name came from, growth architect. It just made so much sense. To, uh, to think about it, because that's what I do is I architect growth. I draw pictures of what companies are going to look like way in advance of when they look that way. And, and I help entrepreneurs do the same thing. They may not be able to pay to have somebody do it for them, but I teach entrepreneurs how to do it for themselves. They can learn how to do it. They can really learn how to be good at this, and it's really exciting to watch them get involved. So basically, you have to go from a know-it-all to a learn-it-all when it comes to business. Well, I would, uh, listen, I, I've never heard anybody put it that way before, but I'd say that's a pretty smart way of putting it. I think that the most successful people are coachable. Uh, they have mentors. They're people that look to other people for assistance, and they find that other people are generally willing to help them because, listen, I've had coaches and mentors in my life. There have been people that have been very nice to me, and I do my very best to be nice to uh, people who are in my world. I mean, yeah, unfortunately, I wish I had 100 times more time in my day. I could take on 100 times more people. But, you know, we all have to find people that uh, we can, you know, we can work with and we can uh, try and do things with. So one of the critical components of selling is value? you got to sell value. You know, you have to remember that what the person on the other side of the table is thinking is about himself. I mean, you're thinking about yourself and the person on the other side.